हेलो एवरीवन वन अमरात्र का भौमिक एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द फर्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ द मच अवेटेड लाइव लॉज एक्सक्लूसिव सीरीज ऑन द हंड्रेड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट्स डिलीवर्ड इन द ईयर 2022 यू कैन एक्सेस ऑल दीज जजमेंट्स थ्रू द लिंक्स प्रोवाइडेड इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स बिलो सो विदाउट फर्दर अडो लेट अस डाइव राइट इनटू इट In the month of January this year in the case titled Union of India versus Alupan Bandopadhyay a Supreme Court bench comprising justices AM Khanwilkar and CT Ravi Kumar held that an order passed by a tribunal can only be challenged before the high court within whose territorial limits the central administrative tribunal bench is located there is however a criticism among legal circles against this decision on the ground that it ignores the principles under article 226 sub clause 2 of the constitution of india on january 20th a supreme court bench comprising justice d y chandrachur and justice a s bopanna in the case titled neel aurelio nunes and others versus union of india and others allowed 27% obc quota in the neet aiq This judgment is relevant for its discussion of the principles relating to reservation under articles 15 clause 4 and 15 clause 5 of the constitution. Justice Chandrachur observed in this judgment and I quote here merit cannot be reduced to narrow definitions of performance in an open competitive examination which only provides formal equality of opportunity. The Supreme Court this year has passed several orders in relation to the extension of limitation allowed for the covid-19 pandemic and lockdown periods on january 10th this year taking note of the surge in covid cases the supreme court had ordered the extension of limitation period for filing of cases and applications in courts and tribunals and excluded the period from 15th march 2020 till 28th february 2022 from limitation in the case titled recognizance for extension of limitation in Centaur Pharmaceuticals Private Limited and another was a Stanford Laboratories Private Limited a bench comprising justices M R Shah and B V Nagaratna clarified that the period of limitation which could have been condoned by a court or a tribunal is also excluded from the limitation period that is up to 7th October 2021 in view of the orders passed by the Supreme Court to extend the limitation period in wake of the pandemic On January 12th in the case titled Lawyers Voice was the state of Punjab a Supreme Court bench comprising CGI NV Ramana Justice Surya Kant and Justice Hema Kohli constituted a committee headed by former judge Justice Indu Malhotra to inquire into the security lapses which took place during the visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Punjab in January this year noting that there was a war of words and blame game between the union government and the punjab government the supreme court said that an independent inquiry was required in this case the committee filed its report later finding lapses on the part of the punjab police the court subsequently forwarded the report to the union and the state for further action in an important ruling under the hindu succession act the supreme court of india on january 20th in the case titled Arunachal Gaundar versus Ponnu Swami held that a daughter is capable of inheriting the self acquired property or share received in the partition of a coparsonary property of her Hindu father dying interstate the court also held that inherited property of a female hindu dying issueless and interstate goes back to the source This decision was given by a bench comprising justices Abdul Nazir and Krishna Murari and is notable for its interpretation of section 15 of the Hindu Succession Act of 1956. A Supreme Court bench comprising justice DY Chandrachur and justice Surya Kant in the case titled Smriti Tukaram Babare was in the state of Maharashtra and another on January 11th this year expanded the definition of vulnerable witnesses to include victims of sexual assault regardless of gender mentally ill witnesses persons with disabilities etc earlier the definition only included child witnesses the court also issued directions to high courts to frame a scheme for safe deposition of vulnerable witnesses 
the court later passed a direction to extend the directions to civil cases and family cases apart from criminal cases. A Supreme Court bench comprising Justices A.M. Khanvilkar, Dinesh Maheshwari and C.T. Ravikumar in the case titled Ashish Cheller and Another vs. the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly and Another quashed the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly's resolution of July 5, 2021 which suspended 12 BJP MLAs for a period of one year for alleged disorderly behaviour in the House. The court held that the resolution to suspend the MLAs beyond the session is unconstitutional, illegal and beyond the powers of the Assembly. It held that such suspension could be limited only to the ongoing session, which was the monsoon session of 2021. Such a long suspension will result in the constituency going unrepresented, the Supreme Court noted. A Supreme Court bench comprising Justices L. Nageshwara Rao, Sanjeev Khanna and B.R. Gawai in the case titled Jarnail Singh vs. Lachmi Narayan Gupta and other connected matters on January 28 this year issued elaborate directions relating to the implementation of reservation for SCST in promotions. The court held that the state is obligated to collect quantifiable data regarding representation. The collection cannot be with respect to the entire class or group but it should be relatable to the grade or category of post to which promotion is sought. CADA should be the unit for collecting quantifiable data. It would be meaningless if the collection of data is with respect to the entire service. The court also said that it cannot lay down any yardstick to determine backwardness. In an interesting decision which can impact several sale transactions across the country, the Supreme Court of India on January 28th observed in the case titled Amar Nath vs Gyan Chand that the production of the original power of attorney is not necessary if the document is presented for registration by the power of attorney holder who executed the document on the strength of it. The Supreme Court bench comprising Justices K.M. Joseph and P.S. Narasimha further observed that the registration authorities are not required to inquire if the power of attorney is valid. Another bench has, however, distinguished this judgment in another case titled Asset Reconstruction Company Limited vs. SP Valithium and other to hold that registering authority under the Registration Act of 1908 while registering a sale deed executed by a power of attorney holder is bound to verify if the power of attorney empowers the agent to sell the property. The Supreme Court bench of Justices Ellen Rao, B.R. Gawai and B.V. Nagaratna in the case titled The State of Manipur vs. Surya Kumar Okram and Another observed that legislature cannot infuse life into a legislation which itself is recognized as unconstitutional by enacting a saving clause. A Supreme Court bench comprising Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul and M.M. Sundresh in the case titled Rajesh Yadav vs. State of UP issued important directions regarding the examination of witnesses so as to ensure a time-bound completion of trial. In this significant decision, a bench comprising Justices L. Nageshwara Rao and B.R. Gawai in the case titled Mrs. X vs. Registrar General High Court of Madhya Pradesh directed the Madhya Pradesh High Court to allow the reinstation of a woman judge, resigned woman additional district judge who had raised sexual harassment allegations against a then sitting judge of the Madhya Pradesh High Court. The Supreme Court held that her resignation in the circumstances of the case cannot be construed as voluntary and thereafter quashed the decision of the High Court to accept her resignation. A Supreme Court bench comprising Justices Indira Banerjee and J.K. Maheshwari in the case titled State of Rajasthan vs. Tejmal Chaudhuri provided this important clarification regarding the retrospective application of the 2018 amendment to the PC Act that is the Prevention of Corruption Act which can impact several pending cases. A Supreme Court bench comprising Justices Heman Gupta and V. Rama Subramaniam in the case title ECG Limited vs. Mokul Sriram EPC provided this clarification 
regarding the applicability of the pre-deposit provision in the 2019 Act to pending appeals. The judgment delivered by a bench of Justices M.R. Shah and B.V. Nagaratna in the case titled Union of India vs. Rajasthan Real Estate Regulatory Authority gives an interesting analysis of the interplay between RERA that is the Real Estate Regulation and Development Act and the SARFACI that is the Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act. The Supreme Court in the case title Hotel Priya A Proprietorship vs. State of Maharashtra quashed a restriction which was imposed purportedly to protect women whereby the number of women who can perform in orchestra bars in Maharashtra was limited. Practices or rules or norms are rooted in historical prejudice, gender stereotypes and paternalism have no place in our society, observed the bench of Justices K.M. Joseph and S. Ravinder Bhatt. The Supreme Court in the case titled Apex Laboratories Private Limited vs. Deputy Commissioner of Income Tax Large Tax Prayer Unit held that pharmaceutical companies gifting freebies to doctors is prohibited by law and that they cannot claim it as a reduction under Section 37 subsection 1 of the Income Tax Act. These freebies are technically not free. The cost of supplying such freebies is usually favoured into the drug, driving prices up thus creating a perpetual publicly enjoyed cycle the bench comprising justices uday umesh lalit and s ravinder bhat had remarked while refusing to stall the release of the bollywood movie gangu by kathiawari the supreme court in the case titled shri babuji Raji shah vs s hussain zaidi observed that one cannot allege defamation merely on the ground of hurt sensibilities the court further observed that the CBFC certification raises a presumption that the film is not defamatory in nature. A Supreme Court bench comprising Justices S.K. Kaul and M.M. Sundresh in the case titled Wahidur Rahman Parra vs. Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir has held that even for protected witnesses declared so, under Section 173, Subsection 6 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, that is the CRPC, read with Section 44 of the UAPA, that is the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, the accused can exercise their right under Sections 207 and 161 of the CRPC to obtain copies of their redacted statements, which would ensure that the identity of the witnesses is not disclosed. A bench of Justices M.R. Shah and B.V. Nagaratna in the case titled Dhan Dadvi vs. State of Gujarat and others held that the appointment of a Vice-Chancellor of a university, even under a state legislation, cannot be contrary to the provisions of the UGC regulations. The Supreme Court noted that in cases where the state legislature is repugnant to the central legislation, the central legislation is to prevail as per Article 254 as education is an item in the concurrent list of the seventh schedule of the Constitution. This view was followed in subsequent cases of the Supreme Court as well, such as Professor Srijit P.S. vs. Dr. Rajshri M.S. and others. That's all we have for you, dear viewers, in this episode. We will come back shortly with the next episode in the series. Stay tuned to Live Law for more such updates. Thank you. If you like our content, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.